Thank you for joining me today for a few moments in God's Word. I'd like to talk to you about our heart's desire. What is the desire of your heart? Scripture has quite a bit to say about the heart and the desires of the heart. Jesus talks about it in Matthew 15, 19. He says, For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, and even slander. If you look at Mark chapter 7, verse 20 through 23, Jesus says, What comes out of a man is what makes him unclean. For from within, out of a man's heart, comes evil thoughts, immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. All these evils come from inside and make a man unclean. It's quite an extraordinary uh, statement that Jesus gives about the heart. And that heart is speaking of the carnal aspect of who we are. We have an eternal soul that is inside us that we really are. The Bible talks that before the foundation of the world, God called us by name. And I believe that every child that is uh, conceived in a mother's womb is given a living soul. And uh, we begin to battle from the time that we are born with the uh, desires of the heart as a desire of a child for a mother, as a desire for a child for food, or to uh, be clean and changed and bathed. And those desires just begin to multiply. And from the very moment we're born, uh, we wrestle with the desires of the heart. Uh, in the passages that we referred to, Jesus reveals the very springboard of all of our wants. So desires are wants. Sometimes they are needs, but more often than not, they are what we want. They are desires. Uh, our fleshly desires come from the innermost being of who we are, and that's our heart. Sin does not just come about uh, as a result of outside forces and influences and temptation. It's something we're born with. Romans teaches us that we were all born in sin and shaped in iniquity, and that we have a carnal nature that is very much out of control when we're born, that if we don't change our direction and bridle our desires, uh, Scripture says that sin, when it is finished, brings forth death. And I don't know about you, I, I don't think any of us desire death. Uh, I desire to be with the Lord. I'm sure that most believers do. Um, I think all humankind has desires for life to be better and less stress and less suffering. Uh, more joy and more fulfillment and more feeling of acceptance. All those things have to do with our desires. Uh, the bottom line is that we're born in a fallen state, and we really start out in a warfare from the very first breath we breathe in this earthly air. Jeremiah 17, 9 says uh, that it confirms that the heart is deceitful above all things, and beyond cure. Who can understand it? That's quite a statement that Prophet Jeremiah makes in 17.9, where he said it is deceitful above all things, and it's beyond cure. So what do we do? Well, the Lord teaches us that when we receive Jesus as our personal Savior, invite him into our heart and confess our sins and repent, that the Lord will give us a new heart, one that is tender toward the Lord and toward truth and toward right, and that as we walk with him, he will shape 
and help us to mature in a right heart and a right desire and a right focus for our life. The Bible teaches that every human being suffers and struggles with sin. The Apostle Paul calls the sin nature in Romans 7, 18 through 20. He says, I know that nothing good lives in me that is in my sinful nature, for I have the desire to do good, but I cannot carry it out. For what I do is not the good I want to do. No, the evil I do not want to do, that's what I end up keep doing. Isn't that the way it is? He says, now if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it is the sin that's living in me that does it. That's Romans chapter 7, 18 through 20. If we look at scripture, it tells us that the heart is so corrupt and deceitful that our motives are very unclear and uh, we, we don't even understand uh, the why and the wherefore of why we want to do some of the things we do. And very often uh, through the years, I've heard people say, why did I do that? Or why do people do the things that they do? Well, the Bible says that it is out of the desires of the natural heart that we end up doing all those things. The truth is that only God can examine our heart and help us to understand the deep motives and desires that are inward, that seem to drive us. And if they're not driving us, they're alluring us. Uh, and often into things that are very destructive to us and to those around us. God never will abandon anyone who is struggling and is making the effort to change the way they live. God is always reaching out to help us. And if we really want to have a different outcome in our lives, in our conduct, in the way we think and feel and what we do, we need to pursue the Lord, repent of our sins, invite Jesus to come into your heart and ask him to be your Lord and Savior and to give you a brand new heart so that those carnal, evil, natural desires can be put away and we can come alive to the godly desires and right thinking and right feeling and right responding that we all so desperately need. David, the psalmist says in Psalm 37, verse four through six, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in him and he will do this. He will make your righteousness shine like the dawn, the justice of your cause like a noonday sun. Isn't that a wonderful promise? We see that God literally wants to help us transform the way we look at life and the things that we look for and desire and long for. God wants us to help us to wants to help us manage those desires so that we have a godly outcome and an outcome that does not lead us to death and destruction, but leads us to eternal life with him. This only happens when we openly come to Jesus, transparent, acknowledging who we are and what we are, but asking him to come into our heart, in our soul, in our mind, and transform us. Paul teaches that when we do that and receive Jesus and believe on him and confess him, that we are made new creatures in Christ Jesus. The old things and the old nature is passed away, and behold, all things become new. Isn't that an awesome hope and truth that we see in God's word? He removes our heart of stone. You can look at Ezekiel eleven nineteen. He'll take away the heart of stone, and he replaces with a heart of flesh that's shapeable, pliable, has emotion and feeling, and can respond to the love of God. Praise the Lord for that. In Psalm uh, chapter 10, verse 17, thou hast 
heard the desire of the humble, thou wilt prepare their heart and will cause thine ear to hear. Isn't that a wonderful promise from the Lord? Psalm 21, verse 1 and 2 says, The king shall joy in thy strength, O Lord, and in thy salvation, how greatly shall he rejoice. Thou hast given him his heart's desire and hast not withholden the request of his lips. So God can give us the things that are good for us and good that work in us and good that works through us to those around us. And if we seek him and ask him, we're told in Psalm that he will do that. In the 145th Psalm, verse 18 and tw through 20, the Lord is nigh unto all them that call on him, to all that call upon him in truth. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him, he will also hear their cry and save them. The Lord preserves all them that love him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for that. Proverbs 13.10 says, Hope deferred maketh the heart sick, but when the desire cometh, it is the tree of life. So those things that we long for, hope for, and want and desire in our life that are good and godly things, it, when they're not there, we feel heartsick and discouraged and defeated. But if we seek the Lord, it says when desire is fulfilled or accomplished, when it's you receive what you've longed for, it's like a tree of life for you every day. Proverbs 13, 17 says the desire accomplished, achieved, is sweet to the soul. So your best life, your hopes and dreams for good and not for evil, those same things that God says, I know the plans I have for you, saith the Lord, not to hurt you or to harm you, but to give you a hope and a future and fulfilled desires, and expected end. Isn't that wonderful? Thank you, Lord. If we look at Isaiah chapter 26, verse 8 and 9, it says, Yes, in the way of thy judgments, O Lord, we have waited for thee. The desire of our soul is thy to thy name and to the remembrance of thee. With my soul have I desired thee in the night, Yea, with my spirit within me will I seek thee early. For when thy judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. Isn't that awesome? Praise God. Mark chapter 11, verse 24. Therefore I say unto you, Jesus speaking, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you shall receive them and you shall have them. What a wonderful promise of God. The things that you desire, whatever you desire, when you pray, if you believe, you shall receive them. First Chronicles chapter 1, or Second Chronicles, pardon me, chapter 1, verse 7 through 12. That night, God appeared to Solomon and said to him, ask whatever you want, for me to give to you. Solomon answered, You have shown great kindness to David, my father, and have made me king in his place. Now, Lord, let your promise to my father be confirmed. For you have made me king over a people who are as number, numerous as the dust of the earth. Give me wisdom and knowledge that I may lead this people for who is able to govern this great people of yours. And God says to Solomon this, since this is your heart's desire and you have not asked for wealth, riches, or honor, nor for the death of your enemies. And since you have not long, uh, have not asked for a long life, 
but for wisdom and knowledge to govern my people over whom I have made you king. Listen to this, verse 12. Therefore, wisdom and knowledge will be given to you, and I will also give you wealth, riches, and honor, such as no king who was before you ever had, and none will have after you. What a wonderful picture of what God wants to do when we desire the right things. When we put godly priorities and live by godly principles and we seek after the Lord and he becomes the Lord of our heart, on the throne of our heart, and we are desiring to please him and for him to bless us and use us in this life, wonderful things can happen. There's a song that came from Hillsong Worship called, I Give You My Heart. This is my desire to honor you, Lord, with all my heart. I worship you. All I have within me, I will give you praise. All that I adore is in you. Lord, I give you my heart, I give you my soul, I live for you alone, every breath that I take, every moment I'm awake, Lord, have your way in me. Lord, I give you my heart, I give you my soul, I live for you alone, every breath that I take, every moment I'm awake, Lord, have your way in me. This is my desire to honor you, Lord, with all my heart, I worship you, all that is within me. I give you praise, all that I adore is in you. Sing it with me. Lord, I give you my heart, I give you my soul, I live for you alone, every breath that I take, every moment I'm awake, Lord, have your way in me. Father God, that is our prayer today. We invite you, Lord, to have your way in our life, in our heart, in our mind, in our soul, in our human frame. God, that you would transform us, renew a right spirit within us, forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness and change our heart, O oh God. Transform it from stone and carnality and let it be, Lord, awakened and let the breath of life breathe into our heart that living, righteous relationship that we need with you, that we may be fulfilled and the desires of our heart and the longing of our soul can be satisfied. We pray it, Father, in the precious name 
of your son, Jesus. Amen. May God richly bless you. And as you seek after him, may every and all desires of your heart be fulfilled. In Jesus' name, have a great day.